can you guys hear my voice yeah yeah it is slightly cracking but it's okay no problem we can carry on all right can i just get this logistics out of the yes. way yes and all right guys it's so good to be here it's about 7 what 7:10 in india you guys could be anywhere you wanted to be on this tuesday evening but you're cho you're chose to be out here so that alone tells me that you guys want to you'll want to go to the next level you'll want to learn something that i'm about to teach you all that will probably help you all in your road to success or whatever level you are today to take you to the next level you listen what got you here will not take you to where you want to go unless you know how to work your mind your past is not your future so stop dwelling in the past and start creating your future now if you can do one thing to make tomorrow better than it was today then that is progress and progress equals happiness so if you got a pen and a paper and you want to write down these things please do so so progress equals happiness so my mission today is is to help you to be the better version of you when you wake up tomorrow my mission today is to help rewire your mind for success so friends worry if you make no time to be the better version of you each day now the studying critical things to avoid at any cost you know these are 13 critical things that i wish i knew when i was growing up because we all grew up in a different societies we all grew up told what we are supposed to do and it's only when you get into the rat race the whole 9 to 5 this whole space of job which is called jo just overbroke you learn a lot of things and some learn it early some learn it late in my case it came a little later nonetheless i learned it and i'm here to share this with you so before we dive deep into the topic of today i'd like to take a few minutes to thank celso for giving me this platform like celso said we go way back when being buddies in school we were lucky to have met each other just about two weeks ago we got onto a zoom i got to know what celso is doing and he gave me this opportunity to talk to you guys you see what celso is doing he's a dentist but he's kind of moved down from what he loved to do into now teaching you all how to manage your finance how to manage your mind your money that's self education what he's teaching you is how to be a better in managing your finances this is not something that was taught in school or colleges i wish it was but it wasn't and there are a lot of things we learn while we are in college and universities and when we get into our careers we do very little or we apply very little than what we have actually learned in universities and in schools and self education is going to be the next level it's going to be the next norm so people like people like uh, Tony Robbins who's one of my mentors Richard Branson Bill Gates these are all school dropouts these are people who have lived on self education they have gone educated themselves and they've created businesses which have gone to be multi billion businesses this didn't come out of school this didn't come out of university it came out through self education so my mission from the beginning of this year has been to make self education the next norm and i'm learning with the best of the best 
I've been fortunate to have the likes of Tony Robbins as my mentor, somebody that is not very easy to get. But I've been blessed in many ways to be able to reach out to him, to Tony Robbins and to Dean Graziosi, and to join them on their mission to make self-education the next norm. And so I'm here to share with you my experiences, things that I've learned along the way. And I hope that you, I can get value to you guys. There are a lot of you on this, on this call, some of you are probably studying, uh, parents, teachers, and you all do have a great skill. You all have a unique ability. You all have something that the creator has given you. And sometimes along the way, we forget how to manage our minds. We forget how to manage ourselves. And a lot of things that we listen from people, we kind of digest it and they become habits. And as they become habits, it starts impacting the way we think, the way we interact with each other. And so I'm just here, this is like a reminder call, you know, things I've learned and I'm going to share with it, share with it to you today. So if you guys are all energized and let us go, here we are. of your life you're answering three questions first question is what are you going to focus on so the most powerful decision we make most of us don't make it consciously is what are we going to focus on we don't focus on everything we focus on a small number of things and that's what we experience in life because you could be focusing right now on the blood rushing through your left ear or the touch of your clothes against your skin but you don't most of what your brain does is distort delete and generalize that makes life simple the problem is when you distort, delete, and generalize, you miss a lot of your life. And focus right down equals feeling. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel, even if it's not true. If I asked you, there are two things you could focus on, what you have or what's missing. Which one do you spend more time focusing on? If your brain is constantly focusing on what's missing, how can you ever sustain happiness no matter how successful you become? It is impossible. What happens when you focus on what you have? You feel alive, you feel no scarcity, you feel joy. How many of you have lots of things in your life that if you focused on it, you could feel grateful for, you could feel excited about? How many got lots of things like this now? Say I. But it doesn't exist unless you focus on it. And we all have patterns of focus. Do you tend to focus more on what you can control or what you can't control, what's outside your control? What is someone gonna feel is constantly focused on what's missing and what they can't control? Sad, frustrated, angry, depressed? So why are they still depressed? Because they're still focusing on what's missing. And they're focused on what they can't control. And I'll add one more. Do you tend to focus more on things from the past, the present, or the future? We all do all three. But if you're going to spend your predominant time and you want enjoyment, it's the present. If you want to be create a great life, it's the future. So it's a balance between the present and the future. These three patterns alone can change your whole life. The second question is, what does this mean? Because the minute you focus on something, you have to give it a meaning. Is this the end or the beginning? Is God punishing me? That's why this problem happened? Is God challenging me? Or is this problem a gift from God? See, if you think it's the end of a relationship, are you going to feel the same way, act the same way as if you think it's the beginning of a relationship? Yes or no? No. The meaning changes the answer to the third question, which is, what am I going to do? 
because meaning equals emotion. Whatever you give a meaning, you're going to have a feeling. If you think God is punishing you, you're going to have a very different feeling from that meaning than you think God is challenging you or this problem is a gift from God. These three questions are happening every moment of your life. And if you're not careful, they take control of you. We are the people that create the quality of our life. we got to change what's going on here and here. Right, so we got to change what's going on here and here. You see, most people, when they have to craft their life, they have a lot of things that they complain about. I don't, I, I can't be rich because I don't have enough money. I don't have enough capital. I don't have the right idea. I'm not in the right industry. I don't have the right connections. These are all things that people think, they craft these habits, they craft these ideas in their mind, and then they believe that I can't, I don't. But from my experiences, there's just one thing that holds most people back from achieving success. And that one thing that holds most people back from achieving success is ego. Now, I know what most of you all must be saying, well, you know what? I don't have an ego. I'm just struggling. I can't make up my mind. I'm just trying to start my life. That's not true. You see, ego comes in many disguises. But let's spend a minute to understand what is ego. Ego is a Latin word for I, I. So literally, ego means I. It is similar to self-importance. Someone who consistently thinks he or she is better than anyone else or any other person. How do we feel? dealing with such people do you feel anger do you feel resentment do you feel frustrated it impacts the way we feel right so ego is a conscious mind the part you identify yourself with it's all the chatter all those voices that go on, go on in our mind that keep telling us these different stories. So when I was at the lowest point, I've had many of these egos, and I'm sure as, as we go to understand these 13 different egos, there may be some of you all who can resonate with some of them, maybe all of them, maybe none of them. And if you are any one of those who cannot resonate with any of one of them, you're an amazing person. But I've had all these egos. And so what is an ego? Wayne Dyer says an ego is simply an idea of who you are that you carry around with you. Albert Einstein says, more the knowledge, less the ego. Less the knowledge, more the ego. And I want you to spend some time to understand this because we'll come, we'll come back to this Albert Einstein definition of ego. Akatoli, Akatoli is one of the current living spiritual writers. He's got many books on, uh, uh, it talks about mind and mind, the power of the mind, egos. And he says complaining and reactivity are favorite mind patterns through which the ego strengthens itself. So these are the definitions, some of the definitions of ego, which means I. So now let's go to the 13th critical definition. Let this be a celebration that today, when you get to know what are these 13 egos that you decide that you want to either eradicate them from your life, you want to learn how to manage them, and we'll talk about how to manage these egos, or you want to kind of spend some time to deep dive into yourself and try to really truly understand 
do these egos relate to you? Do these egos resonate with you? So let's go to the first ego. This is the blame ego. Lame people blame people. So the blame ego says, well, it's not my fault. It's the government's fault. COVID-19, it's China's fault. The government, it's the government's fault. The economy is suffering. I've lost my job. So I'll sit home and I'll watch Netflix. Or it's my parents' fault. I come from a dysfunctional family. So, you know, it's just my luck where I am. The blame ego always blames somebody else. And as we grow up as young children, if we want to get away from something that we have done, what do we do? We blame. And sometimes as we keep growing and we get, we kind of manage to survive blaming everybody else, what happens? It becomes a habit. And as we get into the corporate world, we keep blaming fingers. And what happens when you point fingers to somebody else? You have three fingers pointing back at you. So this is a good time to spend and try to understand, do you have a blame ego? The second one is the know-it-all ego. I've suffered from this ego, you know, when I first started off my career, moved out from university, got into a job. I thought I knew everything. I had just graduated. I started a new job. I saw people working there for 15, 20 years. I thought they knew nothing, that I knew it all. But I knew crap. I started a business. My first business failed. And I thought that I knew how to start a business. But I had absolutely no friends who were in business. None of my family was in business. This is something that happens with a lot of entrepreneurs. They know it all because they don't want to ask somebody. And when they fail, you start realizing that, did I really know it all? And this is something that we should try and ask ourselves. In our walks of life, places we are working today, do we really know it all? Or do we want to learn? Do we want to seek for answers? The third one is the fearful ego. Fear holds most people back. The fear of success, the fear of failure, the fear of making mistakes. It's the what if. What if this happens? What if that happens? And because we have this what ifs that go on in our mind, we stop doing anything. We start living in that comfort space. And years later, everybody around us has moved on in their careers, in their life, and we are still in our what if. But what is fear? The acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. It's not even happened. But it's fear. It is nothing more than a made up story in our mind. And we need to learn how to overcome fear. Because fear can also be used as a fuel to motivate us, to take us to the next level, to take us to the path of success. Do you suffer from fearful ego? The next one is the comfort zone ego. How many of us are in this comfort zone ego? I'm comfortable, I'm happy where I am, I'm content, things are fine, this is my luck. We love, we love the word luck, don't we? I'm not ambitious, I'm just happy. Your income equals your comfort zone. And so when you get complacent in the space that you are, you are not growing. And you know what happens when you're not growing? You're as good as dying. Life is all about risks. And if you start believing that by staying in that comfort space is going to take you anywhere, it's not. It's going to keep you in that same space 
for years and years to come. So if you are one of those that are suffering from a comfort zone ego, now is the time for you to think about it and start the change. The judgmental ego. How many times have we encountered this ourselves? You're walking down the streets, you have a red Ferrari, a Lamborghini, or any, any sports car. A young kid drives through. What is the first reaction? My God, look at the guy, rich kid. His father bought him a car. And see the way they drive, right? That's, that, I've seen this in Goa myself. I've seen this all over the world. We judge people. My question is, how do you know? Y'all are so many of y'all on the call today. Some of y'all are in university. Some of y'all are starting your careers. Some of y'all probably are in a space where you're doing really well for yourself. And someday you may be the person driving a red Ferrari and the people will be judging you without knowing that you have created your life. You have not waited for life to come to you. You have created your life for yourself. And so you, by all means, have earned to drive a red Ferrari or a red car or whatever you want to do. People should not be judging people. If we are growing up in the society where we start judging people, I think today, now is the time to stop because our mind loves pain. Ego strives on pain. These are all the made up stories that we keep telling, our, in, telling ourselves in our mind and we keep projecting them in our own insecurities and values. The next one is the excuses ego. Listen, you can make money or you can make excuses. And an excuse is nothing more than a well-planned lie. I can't afford it. I don't have the money. I don't know how to do it. It's all about I can't, I can't, I don't know how. But all you need is just one damn good reason to make your life successful. There are a lot of people who haven't had even the opportunity to go to school. They, they grew up in broken homes, but they did not sit down there trying to find excuses saying that, oh, I don't have parents to look after me. I don't have the love. I don't have a home. I don't have school. They haven't waited in that space to make the excuses. They have stood up, They've learned to walk and they've found their own niches to make life successful. So it's about time that we stop creating all these excuses in our mind and start finding a life of success. The next one's in the justification ego. We have justifications for everything, don't we? Like this picture says, I fail because my teacher hates me. You justify why you don't or can't do it. I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm married, I have a husband, I have kids at home. I have done this many times, saying that, oh, you know what, we have kids have to go to sleep early, I have to go back home, uh, sorry, I cannot join you guys. So, and I would use these justifications to stay away from attending seminars, just because I would keep justifying to myself and using my kids sometimes as an excuse. So rather than justifying, let's use that as a fuel to motivate ourselves, to go out there and start interacting with people, trying to find a success. Because the more we stop justifying and the more we start doing, that's when success starts coming towards you. The next one is the jealousy ego. Have you had a, ever had stuff like this? Oh, rich people are greedy, they're selfish. Or you go to YouTube, you watch something that you really love, but you then instead of giving a thumbs up, you give them a thumbs down. Or you see that somebody has something that you really love, and so you find every possible excuse to justify that you hate it. 
We've all done this at some point in time in our lives. I know I have. Now I know it's an ego. Now I know it's something that I need to, I need to, I learned to dump it. I learned to eradicate it from my, from my mind. Because if we start living in the space of jealousy, you know, we stop growing. And the minute you stop growing, you know what happens. So if you suffer from this ego, now is the time for you to stop. The next is the fake ego. Have you ever met someone that you don't know, but by the minute you, but the minute you meet them, you have this weird kind of vibe. You don't trust them. You feel they're very fake or superficial. I'm sure you've met people in your life, people that you've encountered with, people with the two masks. One mask says they do this. The other mask says they do that. And these people with these two face masks, as they keep growing in life, that becomes a habit for them. And at some point in time, that starts impacting their careers. It starts impacting them so negative that they are unable to cope with everything that moves around in their brains. So if you're one of those that have this and you start realizing that it is a fake ego, I think now is the time for you to go deep into yourself. Try to understand what is it that you need to do to stop being fake and being more real. The next one is a shy ego. I'm just shy. I'm just an introvert. This has been me till a couple of months ago. I was so shy to be on camera that I would find every possible excuse to stay away. When I realized that shyness is stopping me from growing, when I realized that being shy and staying away from the proximity of, or being in proximity with the kind of people that will help me grow, I decided it was time to dump shyness and move forward. And ever since I learned to dump shyness and move forward, I saw things growing in my favor. I saw things changing in my favor. So if you're suffering from the shy ego, I think now's the time to reevaluate yourself, to ask yourself, is it time now to change? I love this one, the other people opinion ego. Growing up in Goa, I would always be reminded, don't do this, what will the neighbors say? Don't do that. What will the neighbors say? Don't wear a black shirt. What will the neighbors think? And we grew up in that society, always worrying about what will somebody else say? And hearing those things for so many months and so many years, it kind of grinds into you. It becomes a habit that as you're growing up in your career and you want to take a risk to do something, you have this inner voice that's speaking to you. I call it the inner villain, the pessimistic voice, the pessimism in, that we all have, telling us, hey, wait a minute, what will the, your neighbors think? What will other people think? What will somebody else think? And that stops us from growing. We worry about what our family will say. We worry about what our friends will say. We worry about just about everything other than what's good for me. And so if you are one of those living in that space where everybody is trying to remind you, what will the neighbors say? What will your family say? What will somebody else say? This is the time to stop because that's stopping you from growing. That's stopping you from going to the levels. That's stopping your dream. For, you, for those of you who are starting your career now, 
And if you have a very clear vision, a very clear goal, or what is it that you want to achieve, don't listen to others. Don't listen to people who have never been in your shoes. Ask people who have been there, who have done it, who understand what you are going through. Reach out to a role model. There are so many role models. My role model is Tony Robbins. There are so many role models in the world today. Reach out to those role models. You have Dr. Salso. Learn from people who have already done it. And don't keep worrying about what other people are going to think about it. The next one is the do-it-yourself ego. This is the DIY ego. I've suffered from this for a very long time because I always felt that I was a perfectionist at work. And so I always wanted to get things done the right way. And so I would end up doing it myself. But you see, one person can't do a lot, but a team can. I think we had Savio Madeira that spoke on the same platform a couple of weeks ago where he said, together, we do much. Alone, I do very little, or something along those lines. So if you are somebody that suffers from this, do it yourself, or only I can do it because I know how to do it right. You don't, and you can't reach too far. You need to have teams. All these successful people, whether it's Mark Zuckerberg, whether it is, Bill Gates, they've all had teams, very efficient teams that they created. And these are the teams that took them to the levels that they have risen today. It's not a one-man show. So if you're one of those that are like me, once upon a time, a perfectionist, a control freak, I think now is the time for you to decide to have teams. Look at what your value system is and try to build teams around your own value system. And that will take you very, very far. And then the 13th ego is all about the people pleasing ego. Something that I've been in the space all the time. I just want to make sure everybody's happy. You try to please people too much. You always put people first and there's nothing wrong in putting people first, but there comes a time where you have to be selfish in order to be generous. I'll say that again, you have to be selfish in order to be generous. So stop pleasing too many people. Go out there, try to lead a life such that you make so much of money and give it away. You make so much of money, try and help everybody that's around you, friends, family, people that work with you. And just don't start pleasing everybody else and forgetting that you have a life too, you have a journey. The creator put us on this space, on this earth with skills where he wanted us to go and find what is our unique ability? What is our superpower? What is it that I am good at? And he wants us to go and spread this around, spread this message around the world to inspire the other people, not to have these egos and live with the seagulls and then limit what we can do or what we are put on this earth to do. So those are the 13 egos, um, my friends. And we will now spend a little while trying to understand what is it that we do to manage these egos? So the first thing we do to manage the seagulls is we stop taking things personally. You see, ego thrives on pain and conflict. So when we choose to be offended, we allow the ego to take hold of our lives and create pain. But as humans, we need to recognize that love is a natural state. So we should disassociate, we should keep ourselves away 
from pain and feel joy, not misery. So when someone says something that hurts your ego, but that, that hurts you, when somebody says something that you feel negative about, you have two choices. You can either react and engage in conflict, or you can recognize that ego triggers opportunity for growth. So stop taking things personally. The next thing is the most difficult part, forgive. Oops. The next is, is forgive. Love and truth allows your heart to open. You see, ego loves to be right. It's like a weed. And what happens when you have a weed in a garden? If you have a weed in your beautiful garden, what happens? It damages, it damages your garden, right? It, it messes up your garden, it destroys your garden. And so we need to learn how to take off this weed, take off this ego, and just learn to forgive. You don't need to win all the time. You don't need to win all the time. There is sometimes when you sit back and try to understand the other person, the other human being, you learn. And as, as uh, Albert Einstein said, more the knowledge, less the ego. If we start spending time to feed our mind and feeding our mind is what feeding our mind is spending spend 30 minutes a day reading read something that can give you knowledge give read something that can help you grow because as you start feeding yourself with knowledge as you start feeding yourself with growth you start learning how to forgive and practice is the mother of skill so continuously doing forgiveness it takes you to the next level it allows you to forgive and move forward the next one is let go and observe you know let let go of trying to be right trying to win trying to be seen trying to be heard let go and just observe because when you let go and you just sit and observe, you are in a much better position to make a decision. You see, our mind is a two million year old mind. Our mind is not, is not something that helps us strive. Our mind helps us survive. So when our mind helps us survive, and it sees ego around us, you know what it does? It goes towards the ego. It helps us nurture the ego. And it helps us live by those egos. And eventually what happens? It becomes a habit. And unless you start consciously learning to let go and sit and observe, your brain will have all these different voices telling you, no, 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 no. And then you'll have that other voice, which I like to call the inner hero, which tells you, just let it go, let it go, let it go. And we need to listen to that part of, the, of, of, of our mind. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. It's about time now. We have COVID-19, we are blaming just about everybody else. I hear a lot of people telling me, you know, I'm so bored. I don't know what to do with myself. And I say, wow, COVID-19 has given me an opportunity to grow my business, to grow my mind, to strengthen my mind, to do so many things in this, on what God gave us this earth so that we are living in. And so rather than going on complaining and complaining and complaining, I think it's about time that we start realizing that there is so much that we can do. Imagine a time 
when we have to go back to the heavenly kingdom and you have your master, you have your creator standing right there to welcome you. And he asks you a question. So what is it that you have done down there on earth? And you say, oh, well, we had COVID-19, you know, and so we were locked down. So I watched TV. I spent time with my family. Oh, I spent time with my family. We played games. He's going to go saying, oh, my God, I gave you a life. I gave you free air to breathe. I gave you unique qualities. I sent you there for a purpose. And so my friends, I can go on and on talking about this, but I think it's something that we all need to make that effort. We all need to make that conscious effort to start understanding if we suffer from these egos. And if we have these egos that we want to live by, that's not very far that you'll go. But if you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and learn how to let these egos go, release them, let them go, learn to forgive, you will start seeing a much different perspective to life. And our very own Mahatma Gandhi said, you know, when the ego dies, the soul awakens. When the ego dies, the soul awakens. And so Ikatoli says, feed the spirit, not, not the ego. Feed the spirit, not the ego. So this kind of brings me to the end of my session. And I'd just like to remind you again what Albert Einstein said, more the knowledge, less the ego, less the knowledge, more the ego. So it's about time that we start spending some time, 30 minutes a day to read so we can build up our knowledge. And the more we build up our knowledge, the much easier it is to let go of our ego. So just a very quick thing for you guys to be the better version of you today, tomorrow when you wake up, try to do these five things. Stop trying to please everyone. Stop fearing change. Change is what's going to take you to your next level you. Stop living in the past. Stop putting yourself down and stop overthinking. It's not very easy to stop overthinking, especially in the times that we are today. Some of you have probably lost your job. Some of y'all have got salary cuts. Some of y'all are probably struggling. I understand. It's not easy. But the more you overthink, you're like running on a treadmill. You're just at the same spot. You're not going anywhere. And so before I end up, and I'd like to say thank you to Salsa for giving me this opportunity, and uh, I hope I get a chance to come and talk to you all on different other topics. I'd, I'd like to leave you all with a very small message from my mentor, Tony Robbins. And if you don't know who Tony Robbins is, uh, Google him. He's got a lot to offer. It's very difficult to get him. He charges anywhere from $10,000 right up to a million to be in his circle of influence. And I would love to come and share with you things that I have learned from him, with him. And I continue to learn from him and with him. And so this is a message from, for all of you from him. I'm here to remind you all you need is a meaningful life. Everything else is going to go up and down and change. The economy is going to change. Your friends are going to change. Your family is going to change. Your economics is going to change. Your business is going to change. The one lasting thing is a life of meaning. That's more than money. What makes it meaningful for you? I bet loving relationships is a huge part of that. If you have them, your life is meaningful. No matter what happens to you economically, having people you love and who love you, it's priceless. If you want to know your wealth, look around the people you love and love you. And if you don't have a bunch of them, it's time to change that. That's all in your control. All it takes is to focus on their needs instead of your own. And your needs will be met because you'll feel so alive by being a giver. My number one question in life is, how can I help? By seeing I can touch other people's lives, it makes my life have meaning. It goes beyond happiness or sadness. It goes beyond money or lack thereof. Rich comes and go. Wealth comes from the things that are meaningful. 
because there's some part of you that's hungry. Your hunger is a part of your wealth. The hunger to grow, the hunger to learn, the hunger to give. I just really want to encourage you before you leave tonight, when you go tomorrow, leave wealthy. Don't leave with, I will learn some more stuff. Leave with a stacking and leave with some plan that not only is going to make your life better than the ones you love, but also some plan of something you're going to do for others who can't help or hurt you. Because that will teach your brain there's more than enough. What makes it meaningful for you? And before I hand over to Celso, I'd like to give you guys a small little gift. If you go onto my website, it's www.knowledgerevive.com. There is a free copy of the 101 ways to motivate yourself for success. All you need is just get your emails out there and get this free download copy and live a life of success. Thank you. Good night. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Yes, thank you, Sydney. It was really, really good, interesting topic. Means you have spoken it right away and you have explained to us a lot of things as far as how to make life successful, especially by removing that ego. In fact, for me also, it was a very great learning session. In fact, I've learned a lot of new things as far as how to start believing in myself rather than thinking about what others would say about me. So this is basically like how I have been able to learn something new from your side. And I'm very, very much thankful that, okay, we've got this chance of meeting back as buddies. Remember those days in school when we used to fight with each other. And now today, it is exactly 35 years ago that from that day, we, we are meeting today for the first time. And that also on the screen like this. So I must say a very, very big thank you to you, Sydney, for sharing your knowledge with all of us here in Goa and many other places. There are, there are participants from outside Goa also. But we are very happy that we have managed to do this program of motivating ourselves to how to achieve success in a much better way. So on behalf of Nave Mark Foundation, which is actually committed to sharing knowledge, because what we believe is rich is not how much you have, rich is how much you give. And this is what is strong in our very in our foundation. What we have seen is the more you give, the more you get. It's basically saying what goes around comes around. So that is the thing you do. Share your knowledge. And the more you share, the, bigger, the richer you become. So on behalf of Navemar Foundation, once again, a very, very big thank you to you, Sydney, as well as a big thank you to all the participants who have joined in for today's uh, program. In fact, there was a slight hitch as far as the YouTube uh, recording was concerned, but we will be uploading the fresh uh, video very soon because we have luckily recorded the whole thing on this. We had slight issues as far as the net connection is concerned in the other place, in the other office. So the recording has got slightly broken up in the middle, but we will upload from this system the whole video of uh, today's session. So looking forward to our next session, which is going to be on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. And the date will be the, six, uh, the 17th of June. On 17th of June, we are going to be having a very, very interesting topic now from the medical point of view. This one was more from the psychological point of view, means how to actually improve our lives. So now the next talk, which is going to be done, is something very unique. And that is how to cure diabetes without pills or pricks. Means you can cure diabetes without taking medicines as well as without taking any injections. So these are the, this is the topic which we are going to have for the next Wednesday's program. It's going to be on Wednesday. I will be intimating you all through Facebook, through WhatsApp and all the posters. The invitation will be coming through. And secondly, we are very much excited and waiting for the days to come. That is on the 1st of July, we are going to be launching the unique Udan program specially meant for the college students. In fact, we are already getting a lot of registrations and enrollment from various colleges because I'm basically now in touch with 32 college principals who are really encouraging all their students to enroll for the program, which is going to be started on the 1st of July. And this program is going to be specifically meant more for the college students so that they can achieve much more in life. So the first program in the month of July is actually going to start on the 1st. That is, it will be a series of three, uh, three lectures on self-realization and finding out your inner potential. So if there are any college students who have still not enrolled, you can just message me on my WhatsApp number. I can forward you the enrollment form. It's on the Google form. You need to just enroll and put in your details as per the colleges. 
because the colleges which show the maximum participation will definitely be rewarded. And as I've already contacted all the principals as well as the general secretaries of all the students' councils, we would like maximum people to enroll for this program before the 30th of June. Because 1st of July, this, the Udhan program will start and then we will start with the financial literacy classes. As far as financial literacy classes, I will be taking it. And on every occasion, that is like the next the big program will be on the 15th of August, where we'll have a big icon who will be at it addressing all of us on the success mantras and like this we'll be doing more and more programs basically more for the college students so i would request all the college principals and teachers and parents to encourage their children to register for the udan program get yourself get your child enrolled and see to it that they take the maximum benefit all these programs will be done on the webinar so there's no need of that you have to come to college or anything of that sort and the best part of it, it is will be always at 7 o'clock in the evening. So it is exactly a one-hour program, 7 to 8. You can keep your Wednesdays reserved for the learning sessions. And we are going to have a lot of experts coming online and sharing their talks with us. So I wish you all the best and have a very good evening, or I should say now good night, because today we are ending a very awesome session that we had. And I really thank Sydney for sparing his time and being with us today. Thank you and good night. And the, any questions? I can't see any questions as such. It's all comments and appreciation for the talk. Sydney, I think you should be able to read the chat box. Everywhere the, there is a great learning session. Everybody is appreciating your efforts. And accordingly, so far, no questions. So I will end this meeting for today and wish you all a very, very good night. Thank you.